Last week, I passed the PL100 and I wanna share what I did so that you can do the same. There are three simple steps that I always follow and when I do, I have not failed an exam when I follow them. Not to trick you and stay to the end of the video, but the third step is what I think is the biggest difference maker and my personal favorite in studying. Let's get into it. So the first step and what I recommend for everyone is doing the Microsoft Learning Modules. If you go back to the web page where you booked your exam on the same page, you can scroll down and this is going to give you different modules that are fundamental to the exam's content. These are handpicked by Microsoft to guide you through what the exam covers. Microsoft is nice enough to give you a ton of information at your fingertips and these modules and articles have a lot of really good information that tend to have more of a beginner language where you can use, and this is my main driver in creating my notes over the certification content. I've also found that Microsoft has put these wonderful little time estimates on all of their pages and modules, but in my experience, these tend to be overestimated. I find that in order to actually read the modules and work through them and take notes, it actually only takes about half the amount of time it shares. So don't be intimidated, it goes faster than it may sound. Then after you work through each section, each module, make sure you do the practice problems at the end and review your answers. Reviewing your answers is gonna give you a ton of good feedback on why an answer was either right or wrong, and in my opinion, provides a much broader context as opposed to just reading the articles. And this is gonna be important because on exam day, you're answering problems, you're not reading articles. So make sure you review your answers and read the context that it gives you. But I wanna take the time now to give a quick disclaimer that these modules, in my opinion, are just simply not enough to completely prepare you for your exam. Fortunately, this is only step one. Now step two is going to actually give you some experience and some practice in whatever your certification is over. The second step is gonna be getting real experience in a trial environment. So a trial environment is where you can go and set up and spin up a tenant environment and then you can install all of the different D365 apps and you can play around and have a playground set up where you can experiment and learn and understand maybe the nuances of how to build or configure different things. There are a lot of exams out there like the PL100, the PL200, the 900, the MB210, 220, and 230. It would have been impossible for me to pass some of these exams without having any experience in Dynamics or in the Power Platform, go ahead, spin up a trial environment, make a Canvas app, make different screens, make a, a global variable before you go to take the PL100. If you're taking the PL200, create a Power Automate, create some business rules, a business process flow, create a model-driven app, understand the different parts of the Power Platform and how they all interact. And I think this can only really be achieved through experience either on a project or in a trial environment. But if you don't believe me that this is important, fine. But respectfully, you're wrong. <laughs> but you can find a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a trial environment if you don't know how to on my channel. There'll be a link to that at the end of the video. But first, step number three. Look, exams are hard and we are all hunting this infamous 700. You know that these exams can be loaded with trick questions or vague instructions where you don't really know what they're even trying to ask. But step number three is doing practice problems. This is the third and final step in our foolproof exam preparation method here. Practice problems for me have been the single biggest component in me being successful on exam day. Now you may be tempted to just jump to step three and rip out some practice problems, but I'll be honest, you can do a thousand practice problems, but Microsoft is constantly changing the questions on the exam, the pool of questions. So there's gonna be new ones, there's gonna be some that are taken out. So you will get a question that you haven't seen before on your exam. And you need to make sure that you have the experience and the knowledge from the learning modules to fall back on when you get those questions. There are a ton of different resources out there for you to use. Some are free, some cost money. Just be careful, if you are not using a true Microsoft resource, there are a ton of stupid, is stupid the right term to use? I'll say silly. There are a ton of silly people out there that will swear an answer is X, but they're wrong. So it's up to you to make sure you do your due diligence if you are doing practice problems from another source other than Microsoft to make sure that you aren't just 
taking someone else's word, but doing your own research and discovering what the correct answer is. I saw this guy named Alex Harmozy. I don't know if you've heard of him. He is not related to Microsoft at all, but he was saying that he found that there was a relationship between the score you get and the amount of practice problems you do and that that relationship is completely linear. So what that means is the more practice problems you do, the higher your score will be on exam day. So I challenge you, it may seem grueling, but get out there, get them in. If you can do 300, 400 practice problems or, or do 200 practice problems twice, if you can do that, you are gonna be successful on exam day and you are gonna feel so prepared. You're gonna crush out your exam. So my friends, go out there and crush your certifications. But if you want my recommendation, there's a great certification that I would recommend for you to start on and that is the AI 900. And let me be honest, this exam is not technical. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna cover that here. You're gonna have to check out this video. This is gonna cover absolutely everything you need to know on that exam in less than 20 minutes. Lastly, if you wanna know how to create a trial, this is the step-by-step -step video I was referring to earlier. My name is Griffin Lickfell. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. Happy testing.